Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chicago Scholars Virtual College Fair. We thank you for joining us this evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time throughout the session. Your cameras and microphones are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at stripescan.com slash Chicago Scholars. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter of the evening, Santa Clara University. All right, everyone. Thank you all for uh, joining us this afternoon, this evening for some of you. Um, my name is Lorenzo Gamboa. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Santa Clara University. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you uh, to present our campus. Uh, this is the oldest university in the state of California. We've been around since 1851. Uh, so we have a long trajectory and a long history here at Santa Clara. We encourage you guys to come and check us out. Right now, we have about 55% of the student body coming from the state of California, 45% coming from everywhere else, including international waters. What's exciting is that you are right in Northern California, right next to the city of San Jose, Santa Cruz, San Francisco. So never a dull moment here for sure. What's really nice and unique about our location is access to anything and everything your heart might desire. Your next door neighbor here is Google, Yahoo, Lockheed, eBay, NASA, Young, Kibbe and Y, Price, Waterhouse, Deloitte. Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Tesla, Electronic Arts and Media, you name it, it's here. Currently more job offers, more internship offers, and actually current students enrolled at Santa Clara. Now what makes it different from other universities is that I am under what it, uh, as a Jesuit university. So there's only 27 of us in the country. The biggest difference is that we try to inspire and motivate you not only to gain amazing knowledge, but also how do you apply that amazing knowledge to pay it forward to others that might need it? So finding your greatest gifts and then immersing that and giving it back to the world somehow. We do have a religious foundation to us, but around 50% of the student body says they're Catholic, 50% says they are from any other denomination. I always tell students every opportunity is encouraged for you guys to come out here and see, open your hearts and minds to anything and everything that the university has to offer. Currently about 5,500 undergraduate students enroll in Santa Clara with 3,000 grad students on top of that. So not a big campus, but also not a tiny campus. Um, I'd say we're in the medium size, 11 to one faculty student ratios, average class 23 to 24, really impressive retention rates, but also definitely graduation rates. And what's really nice, and the reason why we're not over 90% is because I also offer what they call a three plus two program in business and engineering which means you can stay on for one more year and get your master's and bachelor's in five years, which is really, really impressive for a lot of families and students who are looking at Santa Clara. Again, opportunities to see smaller intimate settings. Here, the nice thing is you will be taught 100% by only accredited faculty. There are never grad students teaching you here. It is you getting access to the real professionals while being uh, a student at Santa Clara. We are big in the liberal arts side. So we were founded as the arts institution, but also built in business and engineering because of the location and proximity in Silicon Valley. So if you're in the arts, check us out for sure. But if you're geeky like I was and love the science stuff, definitely check that out too, because we can get you down and dirty with any aspect of your education while being at Santa Clara. The theater performing arts is huge here as well. For those of you guys who want to tap into it, uh, even if you're looking at business or engineering, don't leave out the arts because those are some of the softer skills that every internship or any employer might be looking for. We're also 20 Division I sports, 19 club sports, and over 150 clubs and organizations. So students always ask me, what am I looking for? I want people who aren't afraid to push the envelope academically, but also not be afraid to go paint your face and get on ESPN every once in a while. We are, to, um, our ladies right now just won division one athlete champions in soccer. So come out and join us. We do have a two year housing requirement for all students. So now first years and second years, 100% of you will be on campus. I do have housing available for all four years if that's what you choose to do. But many of you might want to study abroad or enjoy some of the Bay Area opportunities and maybe you live off campus and that's doable as well. Remember, it is the Bay Area, the most culturally diverse place in the world you will ever get to live in and experience. Every culture, every language, every food is available here 24-7. We are only on the Common App, 
and the really nice thing is that you just need to tell me where you want to begin your academic adventure in. We are direct entry into arts and science, business, or engineering. And so once you get in, anything else is available to you. We will help you decide what your majors and all that stuff might look like. In fact, most students here will double major, double minor, study abroad, and still be able to accomplish all that in four years. This slide here shows you what I'll be looking for in your application, so feel free to take a snapshot of this because it's the most important information for you. Get it all done and then submit. Make sure you hit the deadlines and make sure you submit the CSS profile and the FAFSA information to be considered for optimal packaging at the university. If you have questions or anything, you're not by yourself. You can always connect with us on all different platforms um, and make sure that all your questions are answered so that you can learn about all the wonderful opportunities all universities out there in the country have for you, but especially the one in Northern California, which is the oldest Santa Clara University. And with that, folks, I will turn it over to my colleagues down south, Omar Sasqueta, down at the So take it away. All right. Thank you, Lorenzo. Um, all right, so um, my name is Omar Sasueta. I'm the Director of Admission at Claremont McKenna College. Uh, we were founded as a men's college in 1946 uh, with just 80 students. Uh, most of them were World War II veterans. Uh, we also offered just one major, political economy, uh, with the goal of catapulting these young men into leadership roles in government and business. Uh, more significant though, uh, CMC was founded with a strong sense of purpose. Um, our founding president and alumnus of Pomona College and himself a veteran envisioned CMC as a, as a different type of liberal arts college, one that would embrace both the liberal arts and sciences curriculum, but also emphasize the practical fields of economics and politics as a way of developing leaders prepared to deal with the pragmatic concerns of public affairs. So as a result, CMC quickly developed a, a reputation for producing outstanding leaders in business and government. And our first graduating classes were filled with successful entrepreneurs, executives, and public servants. Um, CMC's campus has seen many changes since its founding. Our population has risen to 1,300 students from all over the world. Uh, we became co-educational about 40 years ago. Uh, we now have roughly even split of men and women on campus, all of whom live in dorms much more appealing than those original post-war army barracks. Uh, we've responded to the complexities of leadership in today's world, uh, really by establishing top-notch programs, not just in the fields of government and economics and international relations, uh, for which we are best known, but also in literature and history and philosophy, psychology, um, and the sciences, to name just a few of our 40 academic programs. Yet in the midst of our college's rapid development, uh, CMC has made a conscious effort to maintain our pragmatic spirit and ensure, um, and ensure that we provide a compelling option for young leaders who want to leave college with the skills and experience necessary to lead in whatever profession um, they choose. So to give more of a concrete sense of how CMC balances a, a liberal arts education with a practical emphasis, I'd like to spend just a few moments describing some of the academic, professional, and global opportunities available to CMC students. So regarding the classroom dynamic at CMC, vigorous, fast-paced debate is the norm. So thanks to a student body that is split among conservatives, liberals, and moderates, CMC is a place where divergence of opinion is celebrated and seen as essential to our goal of developing pragmatic leaders. Our students do not rally, all rally around the same social issues or political candidates. And on most, if not all topics, there's no majority opinion at CMC. So academically, um, CMC provides a rigorous general curriculum uh, with unique major, majors like science and management uh, or philosophy and public affairs, uh, which provide a strong balance between academics and real world application. So more than half of our students complete a double or dual major, and many also add one of CMC's sequences, otherwise known as minors, uh, in fields such as leadership and human rights and ethics. And as you would expect from a college focused really on the practical application, CMC is invested heavily in student research. Our students not only complete a thesis in their senior year, but CMC also provides opportunities for substantial research with faculty members from the moment students first set foot on campus. Thanks to CMC's 11 research institutes, 
Students are also able to engage in paid research, working on teams examining current issues like redistricting or environmental sustainability, uh, energy security, and more. Uh, these are some of the best jobs on campus. They help to connect academic life to real world issues for our students. Our practical approach um, also leads to opportunities for professional development. Um, thanks to a highly regarded career services program and an active and really well-connected alumni network, more than 80% of our students secure internships each summer. Um, those internships could uh, come through the traditional recruiting process and lead to working for companies like Deloitte or Google, uh, for organizations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or the Human Rights Watch, or for a government agency or politician. Or they could come through one of our sponsored internship programs in which students receive funding uh, directly from CMC for a self-designed internship. Uh, this is one of the most extraordinary things about CMC. Last summer, students received internship funding from CMC, uh, totaling almost $2 million. Uh, a direct result of our practical education is the opportunities our students have post-graduation. And the majority, over 80% of our graduates, enter the workforce immediately after graduation and on average earning $75,000 starting salary. CMC also provides uh, a, a stream of global opportunities that go well beyond our study abroad options. In addition to study abroad, all of those internships and in our semester long programs in Washington, uh, DC and in Silicon Valley, CMC sponsors professional networking trips to New York and San Francisco, Southeast Asia, Middle East and other locations around the globe. And the last thing I wanna mention is probably my favorite thing about CMC and it's called the Athenaeum. Uh, it's where CMC hosts a guest speaker series. The Athenaeum hosts guest speakers who are leaders in their field, whether that is in the public, private, or social sector in various fields, including politics, research, academia, law, business, and, and just really so much more. Students sign up for the guest speaker events. They're all held in the evening and include a, a reception, a, a full served dinner, um, and the guest speaker's presentation. Well, the best part about it though, is we do this every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday throughout the academic school year. Uh, and each year CMC hosts well over 100 guest speakers. So that's all the time I have right now. Um, I hope to see, um, I hope to uh, connect with some of you later on this summer and into the fall, um, and we will turn it over to the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we're gonna hear from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Scholars, I'm gonna share my screen with you. There we go. Hi, I'm Brenda Jones. I am the Associate Regional Director of Admissions with St. Mary's University of Minnesota. That means that I don't actually live in Minnesota. I actually am from the Chicago area. So I'm very familiar with the area and where you all might live. So St. Mary's University of Minnesota is located in Winona, Minnesota. So it's way down in the southeast corner of the state of Minnesota, kind of where Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa all meet. That means it's about a four to five hour drive from the area in um, around Chicago. And also Amtrak travels from um, Chicago up to Minneapolis with a stop in, in Winona. So that's a possibility of um, ways for you to get to campus, along with the fact that there are many students from the Chicago area that are current students at St. Mary's University, and they would be more than happy to provide you with a ride back and forth to campus. So Winona is actually a town that sits on the Mississippi River. It is um, in an area of Minnesota where the landscape is very unique. So there are really high hills next to the Mississippi River that we refer to as the bluffs. And St. Mary's actually kind of sits up in those bluffs. The town of Winona is about a little more than 26,000 people. There are three colleges in the town of Winona, St. Mary's University, Winona State, and then we also have a technical school in the town. So between those three colleges, that brings an additional almost 12,000 students to the city of Winona every year. So the students actually make up about a quarter of the population um, of the town of Winona. So one of the unique things about the town of Winona is all the outdoor recreation that is available there. So as you can see in this picture, we have the bluffs, we have the river, 
We also have two lakes in town. So lots and lots of um, opportunities to do uh, different activities on the water, but also activities up in the bluff, such as um, sledding, snow skiing, hiking, rock climbing. We also have an amazing art museum, which you can kind of see in the center there. And then we have a quaint little downtown area that provides different types of um, coffee shops and little cafes and uh, boutique shopping. So the campus of St. Mary's University in Winona is strictly undergraduate students. So that means that they are gonna be students just like you who have graduated from high school and are working towards that first degree. We have about 1,100 of those undergraduate students on our campus. We do have a graduate campus, but that is located in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. So still two hours away from where our campus is in Winona. So the ratio of males to females is about even, just depending on the year. Um, right now, it's about 46% male to about 54% female. As far as campus life, about 85% of our students do live on campus. We do have a requirement that you would live on campus for two years. However, for the additional two years, most of students decide to stay on the campus. As you can see in the picture, you see the academic buildings, the athletic playing fields, the residence halls, that, that makes up about 100 acres of our campus. But our campus is 450 acres, so 350 of acres of our campus are up in those bluffs. So that provides um, about 10 plus miles of um, hiking trails. We do have a disc golf course, lots of beautiful um, cross country uh, trails. And um, we have a trout stream that runs through campus. So our campus is kind of sits on the edge of town, but it is within walking distance to restaurants, um, a grocery store, some you know, different shopping. And we do have a transit system that will come and pick students up on campus and take them to other areas of town. We are NCAA Division Three for sports. About a third of our athletes, or about a third of our students are student athletes. We do provide opportunities for intramural sports. And we do also have club sports, such as ultimate frisbee, volleyball, water polo, hockey, Nordic skiing, soccer and even ballroom dancing. In addition to that, our theater and arts are very strong. Um, if you decide that you would like to major in theater, we have everything from musical theater to technical theater to theater management. Um, but if you are interested in music, we do have nine choirs and bands. We do give music scholarships to non-majors, but if you are a theater or an art major, you can apply for scholarships in those areas also. If you're not interested in sports and you're not interested in the arts, we do have over 50 clubs that, um, are in, that get students involved in uh, community service, special interest, uh, politics. As far as academics, we have 40 different majors. Um, at St. Mary's, when you apply to St. Mary's, you can pick whatever major you wanna major in. However, we do have two selective majors. That is our new nursing and our three plus two PA program. We do provide lots of different scholarships. And in addition to that, we can be found a lot on social media. So I will put in the chat my contact information and I hope to see a lot of you soon. Sandra. Next up, we are going to hear from Roosevelt University. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Abel Amazqua. I'm an admissions counselor from Roosevelt University. Um, and thank you for taking time out of your day to be here today. Um, so just to kind of get started a little bit with uh, what Roosevelt is and who we are, um, so the first thing that you have to know about us is that we are located right in downtown Chicago. And so for students who really are looking for a very metropolitan feel, they want to be right in the middle of a very bustling area that has quite a few different things available to them. That's what we have. Literally, you walk outside of the building and there are going to be hundreds of things uh, for you to do, whether it be some sort of park, whether you want to go shopping, checking out the culinary experiences, checking out the different museums. We are very centrally located, so it does give a lot of students that opportunity to be able to do a lot of things when they have some free time outside of the classroom. 
Um, aside from that, one thing that is really nice for students that do come live at the university, since we are right in downtown, all students do get what is called the U-Pass. So any of the CTA trains or buses you get on actually just with swiping your card unlimited times a day. Um, and it is really nice because Chicago is one of those cities that is a commuter city, so you don't actually need a car to get around. But it is really nice because you actually can get around pretty easily, very quickly, and at the help of an app, it'll tell you when the next trains are coming. So um, really, for those students that are looking for something that is very fast moving, very busy, but definitely with lots to do, that's what we offer. In terms of what our campus really looks like, this right here is probably going to be the best picture. Um, that blue building and the back, that is called our Wabash building. That is where our students actually live. Um, the top 14 floors are, sorry, top 17 floors are dedicated to nothing but student housing. Um, so definitely you are going to have these very nice un uh, unobstructed views of the city. The building itself was only built back in 2012. So everything in there is pretty relatively new. Um, so if you are looking definitely for something, well, for some fun residence halls, we definitely offer that. That square building that's right in front of it, that right there is our auditorium uh, building. That right there is going to be another building that has different classrooms, that has different offices, um, different theaters. Um, and the two are interconnected. We are on what is called a vertical style campus. So like a lot of other campuses that are traditionally built over these big cross uh, big pieces of land were actually built from the ground up. So it is really nice because students are able to get back and forth between the two buildings that are interconnected um, very easily. Aside from that, we do also have two other buildings that you can't see. One is gonna be the University Center, which is gonna be another housing complex that we have for students, where we also have students from two other schools living there. So if you're looking for a very social experience, they also have a more apartment style living um, with uh, living rooms, with your own personal bathrooms. That's where students typically go their junior, senior year. And then the Goodman Center is a place that is really popular for our athletes because that's where we have our training facilities. Um, plus, what's really nice is that the area itself is just known for being very student centric, yet over 40,000 students living in the area. So every time you step outside, you're going to see new students everywhere. Um, in terms of other campuses that we do have, we do have some majors that um, are specific to some campuses. We do have in Peoria, Schaumburg, and Lake County. Um, though every single major except for like two or three are available in the downtown Chicago campus, um, and typically all first year students will always start downtown. Um, just to give you guys sort a little bit about of a breakdown of what our student body sort of looks like, we are known for being the third most racially diverse university in the Midwest with 45% students of color. Um, we have more than 120 degree programs, so I would say probably for about 90% of students, you probably have something you're interested in, and we are uh, first generation students 30%. Um, so if you look at our campus, we definitely have a big broad diversity, um, pretty much uh, it's a good I guess sort of a reflection of what Chicago is being known for a melting pot city. Our school is exactly that as well. Um, as I mentioned, living on campus is one of the really nice benefits for those students. You could probably get up uh, probably five, 10 minutes before your classroom and uh, for your class time, and you could probably still get there on time. Um, but it's also really nice because for students that do live on campus, they do feel definitely much more connected to the university. Typically, they tend to do better in school. Uh, they typically tend to feel more connected to their classmates. Um, and just the opportunities they have are just to reach away, um, especially for those students that maybe are looking for things like getting involved in clubs on campus, sports, or maybe looking to work um, on our campus. It really works out really greatly for them. Um, in terms of what we offer for studies, we definitely have quite a few different things. The biggest one is definitely the arts and sciences, uh, but some of our other colleges do include business, education, performing arts, and then also pharmacy. Um, the top five majors you really are going to see at our university, number one is going to be psychology, number two is going to be biology, number three will be accounting, number four will be criminal justice, and then number five is going to be hospitality and tourism management. Typically, the way that it works for every single student, most uh, all of our majors are going to be 120 credit hours. So each year, you're going to be looking to take about 30 credit hours. So each semester, 15 credit hours. Um, so you're going to be taking about 45 classes a semester. What is really nice is that many of our students actually find a way so that they don't have to go to class all the time, but most students going only four days and some students only going three days. So we really try to give students a lot of different opportunities available for, uh, for how they want to go ahead and schedule their coursework with us. 
Um, when people ask us why Roosevelt, obviously there is thousands and thousands of co uh, colleges and universities out there who offer some of the programs that we offer. Um, but we definitely have quite a few different things that I really like about the university. Um, the first thing is going to be the honors and learnings commenting, which is going to be our center specifically there to help you guys out academically. We have tutoring, we have mentoring, a quiet place to study. Um, that right there is where you go and it's all free. Our student organizations are also another fun thing for students, just because we do have quite a few ways to get involved. We have over 20 athletic teams. Um, so that is also another fun, um, another good thing for students if they are looking for something a little more social. And then finally, just a different career development and professional mentorship options that we offer. Um, a lot of students who are, once they get to their junior, senior year, maybe are looking to look for something, you know, uh, job-wise, or maybe like an internship to help them once they leave the school. We have a whole office dedicated to that who will do things like helping you build a resume, write a cover letter, um, how to interview. Uh, we definitely want to help you guys reach your educational careers with Roosevelt. Finally, just a little bit about our scholarships, depending on your GPA um, and also your test score. Scholarships range anywhere from $8,000 to $10,000. Um, we do also have need-based grants as well, from $900 to $9,900. And we do all of this um, on our own. We don't really ask for you guys for any additional paperwork once you guys fill out the, the application. Um, but other than that, um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next up, we are going to hear from the University of Southern California. Hello. Um, and welcome. I hope that uh, you've all been doing well. I am so disappointed that we don't get to see you in person today, but hopefully that'll happen again soon. Uh, my name is Risa Tewksbury. I'm Director of Midwest Admission at USC, and I'm pleased to have a few minutes to talk with you this evening. Um, first off, I want to share with you a little bit about USC, of course. Um, we are one of the largest private schools in the country. So you've heard from several smaller schools so far, and I'm right in the middle between you hearing from smaller schools and, of course, your flagship school, public school in the state of Illinois. Um, so I'm going to tell you what makes us a little bit unique. And one of those things is that we are one of the largest private schools. We've got about 48,000 students total, about 20,000 of those are undergraduate students. But when you're looking at colleges, USC has those benefits of a small traditional liberal arts college but also the benefits of a much bigger school. So you see that our student to faculty ratio is eight to one, average class size is just 26 students. You have full-time faculty and uh, working with you in the classroom and all the opportunities for faculty advisors and faculty mentors but you also have all of the unique opportunities of a much bigger school. Um, so USC has interdisciplinary studies. We have over 150 different majors and over 150 minors. The majority of students at USC are actually studying more than one thing. So if you're at this point thinking, how are you going to narrow it down? At USC, you don't have to. So whether you want to study liberal arts, but add to that a computer science minor, or you want to study music or film or acting, but you still want to pick up a minor in business or do a double major, you can combine anything between our liberal arts colleges and our 19 professional schools at USC. We also have very much of a global perspective at USC. We've got a large international student population, but we're also ranked second in the country of sending our own students overseas for international study. And our scholarships and financial aid apply to those programs. So it doesn't cost you more to be studying overseas. We also have a lot of research opportunities starting as early as your freshman year. Um, we've got an active Trojan family, which is our alumni organizations helping our students as mentoring and job shadowing and helping you get those career starts. Um, I even had a colleague, an alumnus, contact me today from downtown Chicago saying that he had an opportunity for one of our students in his architecture firm. And so we were hooking him up with some of our students that are currently in our School of Architecture. So it's not limited to the city of Los Angeles. But I also want to spend a moment talking about the opportunity that being in Los Angeles provides for our students. We are located right downtown Los Angeles. However, unlike your urban campuses in Chicago, ours is a very traditional park-like campus with our dorms, our resident halls, our athletic facilities, our research facilities, our music practice rooms, 
all located on the main campus. But you have LA as your campus town for all the nightlife, entertainment, shopping, culture, the beaches, the mountains, the desert, the year round outdoor climate. So you have all of the benefits of Los Angeles as well. Um, you also have the campus life of our campus. We have over a thousand clubs and organizations. We have mentoring, we have um, performing arts, we have the Trojan marching band, we also have athletic programs, but we also have support st services for our students. We are a residential campus and our students have free tutoring opportunities. We have our cultural centers, um, we have support services, we have a brand new first generation plus uh, facility on campus with embedded mental health counselors as well in all of our cultural centers. So this can be a really great combination of factors for you to experience as part of your, your college life. I wanna tell you a few things about the admission process. USC is on the common application that we do have a writing supplement um, as part of the common application. And if you are applying to one of our six schools of art, you would have additional uh, portfolio or audition um, portions required as part of the application. I also wanna emphasize that USC is test optional going forward. So you don't need to worry about submitting a standardized test score as part of our application process. We wanna see how you've achieved academically, the things that you've been involved in outside of the classroom, leadership, commitment to service, who you are as a student and what you'd be bringing to USC when you arrive. But being a private school, we are expensive. Private schools can feel a little off-putting when you look at the total budget or cost of the school, but USC does meet 100% of your demonstrated financial need. And we also had over 20% of our entering students this year receiving merit-based scholarship. Um, I also want to emphasize that we have a new affordability initiative. So if your family is earning less than $80,000 a year, you're guaranteed to have free tuition through gift money through the need-based process. But you can also qualify for additional aid to help support your housing, room and board, transportation and expenses. Um, as far as um, application deadlines, USC does not have early decision, early action. We believe you should have until the very last moment to make a decision without being compelled to decide early. But we do have a scholarship application deadline of December 1st. If you are applying to another school, early action or early decision, that's fine. This isn't impeding that because it is a scholarship deadline, not an early action program. And then our final application deadline is in January. You'll see on the screen now my contact information. I am the director of Midwest Admissions, so I work with all students from Chicago. Um, we also have a large number of virtual events and tours available to you, so I encourage you to check, check those out, and I'll drop that uh, contact information in the chat box as well. And I also know that we will be doing Chicago um, downtown in-person events this fall, so hopefully um, we'll be able to see and meet some of you in person this fall. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And last but not least, we are going to hear from the University of Illinois Urbana Champaign. You are muted. Sorry about that, guys. Good old technology. Uh, but again, my name is Letitia Williams. I'm one of the Chicago-based admission counselors for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So welcome to the power of I. All right, so the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, we are about two hours south of Chicago in the cities of Champaign-Urbana. Um, we are home to 11 different academic communities. Um, home to over 150 different majors. We are primarily known for our computer science, engineering, and business programs. Um, but we do have a large caliber of programs, liberal arts, business. If you are undecided, you may enter as an undeclared student. Um, one of our newest colleges is the School of Information Sciences. So I definitely encourage you all to check out all of our majors um, to, to obviously learn more about them. I do wanna point out Illinois is an institution where you apply directly to a major. So we encourage you to do your research and select not only your first choice major, but as well as your second choice major that you are interested in. 
Um, Champaign-Urbana, we are a top 10 college town in America. Um, although we are two hours south of Chicago, it is a mini Chicago filled with a lot of restaurants, a lot of different things to do, um, just a, a very um, involved campus, I would say. Student involvement. So we are home to about 1,800 registered student organizations. So if you're interested in student clubs, jobs and internships, leadership opportunities, cultural activities. Uh, we are one of the most diverse institutions in the Big Ten. So if diversity is something that is big to you, um, certainly that's what you will get at the University of Illinois. Um, we have, we're very big on community events, volunteering, concerts and festivals. The pandemic kind of shifts some things, but we are hopeful to get back to the normal life um, just with all the activities we have on campus. Um, with our, our activities on campus, a lot of our students, about 68% participate in internships. Our internships um, and, and, and research expands all disciplines, so you do not have to just be in a STEM-related field to take advantage of those different research or internship opportunities. It is open to all. 30%, and again, this is before the pandemic, 30% uh, of our alumni did uh, participate in study abroad. So again, moving forward, our study abroad will look a little bit different um, just due to the ongoing pandemic, but that is something certainly that you can take advantage of um, as a student at Illinois. It may not be this year, but um, more years to come. Student services. So as I mentioned, we are one of the most diverse institutions in the Big Ten. So support is very important to us. We have a lot of students who come from not only Chicago, but from all over who are first gen college students um, who, you know, they, they're the first in their families to go to college. So we just want to make sure we have the right support for them. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, homesick, uh, we have the counseling student we, uh, center. We also have minority student affairs. We have LGBT Resource Center. We also have the McKinley Health Center. We have disability resources and educational services. So if you require a note taker or a tutor or you need um, any type of help, uh, we can certainly help you. Um, housing. So although we are a big institution, uh, we have 35 different residence houses, 11 living learning communities. A living learning community is an opportunity for you to uh, stay with other students who share a similar interest. So if you're admitted as a business student, you may be able to stay in the business LLC. Or if you're thinking about um, a health um, a health profession, profession uh, sorry, profession, you may be able to uh, stay in that LLC. So I definitely encourage you to check out the different um, housing opportunities. Um, Alumni success. So we had about 9,700 employ employers recruit um, our students last year. These employers come from all over Google, Deloitte, Pepsi, IBM, Microsoft. Um, so they, they love our students and they come back year after year uh, to recruit our students. And I also just want to switch gears with our application. So um, new to you all, we, we are actually going to be on the Common App starting fall 2021. So you're able to submit your application through the Common App as well as Coalition, which is our shared application portal, or you can submit your application directly at admissions.illinois.edu. Uh, we are going to be test optional again. So if you will be a senior in the fall, this applies to you, as well as if you are a current junior right now, um, so you do have the opportunity to apply without scores or with scores as no penalty to you. We still also look at your grades, your course rigor, extracurricular activities, and essay is super duper important, guys, so don't take it lightly uh, because we do review holistically just to get a better idea about you as a student, okay? Um, the cost is listed on your screen. So we have what we call a uh, tiered pricing in regards to your uh, room and board and tuition, um, di differential tuition, I should say. So no two majors cost uh, the same amount of money. For example, um, if you are a psychology major, um, the total cost is about 37,000 for the year versus if you are a computer science major, that cost is about 38,000 for the year. But if you want to get um, more information, I'll drop the link um, in the chat in terms of the exact cost for your major. And I did want to also conclude to say um, that we do um, accept application fee waivers as well. It must come from your high school counselor or another school official. 
Um, but I thank you all and I will drop my contact information as well as different links. Um, and, and so you guys can research, research further. Thank you. Thank you. And now that you guys have heard from all six schools, I'm going to invite all of our panelists to join me back on to answer one more question before you guys, before we end for the evening. So that question that I'm going to ask them to answer in the same order in which they presented in is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Uh, I'm going to be selfish. Uh, it's something called the Colorado Native Challenge. You, um, I originally came in from Colorado and helped establish it with some of my alum colleagues. We wake up really, really early winter quarter, go ski Lake Tahoe, come back down, have dinner in San Francisco, come back down, have a bonfire on the beach of Santa Cruz, and the first person on the team that falls asleep gets baptized in the Pacific Ocean. Um, at CMC, ours also involves um, involuntary uh, water. Um, so um, for birthdays, uh, we have a few different kind of fountains across campus. Um, and this is a tradition that goes back to, uh, there's a, a single sex college next door, Scripps College. Um, and uh, when, if there was ever an engagement uh, between a CMC student and a Scripps student, because we were an old men's college, um, they would throw them in uh, a fountain. Um, it's now transitioned to just for birthdays. So on your birthday, uh, your friends come in at midnight um, and drag you out to the fountains and throw you in the fountains and they call it ponding for your birthday. St. Mary's University of Minnesota, I think my favorite event that we have every year is the Taylor Richmond Benefit Dance. That is um, an event that our students plan and we actually select um, a person in the community that either has like some um, medical issue or something going on like that, that they um, need some significant funds for. And they actually plan this whole dance and a silent auction and have fun doing it, but at the same time raising money for that family. Um, at Roosevelt University, I think probably the favorite event that I that I think we have, or at least the one that students really seem to like is homecoming. Um, so we just to have homecoming in college. But what's really fun is that we always choose these really interesting locations in Chicago that typically a lot of people like to go to. So for example, we've done a couple of the museums, we've done the Shedd Aquarium, we've done it in the Sears Tower, now known as the Willis Tower. Um, so they always have these really cool, interesting locations that usually overlook the city in some sort of way. Um, and so your students usually really have a positive experience at those. Um, I think going with my colleagues that started out, I'll use a water tradition um, that uh, USC is a very spirited campus and our Trojan marching band is notorious um, for having lots of spirit and really energizing the student body. So um, for those of you in Chicago, you might have seen them every other year. They do a huge scholarship fundraiser on Navy Pier right in front of the Ferris wheel. But one of my favorite traditions is that during finals, the marching band does pop-up spirit concerts in front of the libraries in the, you know, late at night, you're so in the library, you're supposedly studying, but Levy Library has a huge water feature in front of it, and the entire marching band gets into the fountain, and so you're standing there listening to the spirit rally, and the tubas are scooping up and throwing water at the students that have gathered, and you're supposed to be studying, but it's a nice study break, and everybody has a really good time, and uh, so I would say that's one of the most popular traditions that you USC. And this last year, they even did it virtually. They did uh, pop-up Zoom bombing uh, spirit rallies during some of the study and review sessions. So it's a lot of fun. I would say for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, it's definitely um, our quad week. Um, it's, it's the welcome week. It's the first week, all of the new freshmen, and then we welcome back all of our continuing students. Um, and it's just, it's a big, although the students are supposed to be going around getting information, it's just, it feels like a big party. Everyone is happy. You know, they're eating good, good college food, aka the freshman 15, all of that good stuff. Uh, we had to have it virtual 
um, this last year. So we're looking forward to just bringing the normal back um, and just being in person and seeing everyone on campus. Um, we are a big sports school, so like everyone comes out. So that's that's definitely like one of my favorite tra uh, traditions from UIUC. Thank you all for sharing. And thank you everyone for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey where we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. In about a week, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash Chicago Scholars. Thank you all so much. And thank you to our wonderful panelists for some, a great 45 minutes of information. And I hope everyone has a good night. Good night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.